The 2023 general elections recorded violence, intimidation. Some notable Nigerians made inciting statements, among other undemocratic activities that challenged the elections. On Monday, the United States of America announced it has placed visa restrictions on some Nigerians who undermined the 2023 elections. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who made the announcement, did not, however, mention names. We'll be taking a look at this U.S. Uh, visa ban on electoral offenders on The Breakfast this morning. A Nigerian businesses battle to stay afloat as operating costs continue to surge. Africa's most populous country grapples with double-digit annual inflation since 2016, with the consumer price index hitting 20.5%. So what are the ways forward? Just how can they cope? We we'll seek to find answers on the breakfast this morning. We'll also be taking a look at some of the headlines on some national dailies with all the press when we get our analysts joining us to dissect the headlines on the breakfast this morning. A very pleasant morning to you. I am Maureen. You're welcome to The Breakfast. And I'm Justin. Uh, good to have you join us this Thursday morning. We trust you are doing well. Yes, we hope you are doing well, especially as you prepare to go to work this morning. It's another wet day <laughs> and uh, I love the rain, Justin. Ah, you know, I love the, the rain. You know they say about the song, when there are lots of issues, they say blame it on the rain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love the rain. It makes you relax. Uh, the weather is cool and everything. You're a bit calm, but when you have to drive through the roads of Lagos and the rush and the curses, uh, mm. what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it could be so, so cumbersome. But then, yeah. uh, today, it's raining, but we just have to find a way of walking around the rain. Yeah, I mean, here we are. Yes, <laughs> in yeah, spite of the be, rain, yes. and in spite of the rain, you will get to your place of work. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day. And, um, well, our theme for the day is small business, the backbone of a functional economy. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, SMEs contribute 48% of the national GDP. They do. And uh, it accounts for 96%, 96% of uh, businesses in the country. And that's True. according to the ILO, that's the International Labor, Labor Organization. Organization. Yeah. And then it, it accounts for 84% 80, of employment. Yes. So this is the highest employer of labor. Yes. They, it's they, huge. Uh, yes, because if, if you find that uh, a lot of people, uh, because of uh, one issue or the other, they uh, just have to start some small business for themselves so they can keep them, um, you know, body and soul together and be able to take care of um, uh, expenses uh, for their immediate selves and, of course, their family members. But then oftentimes you find that more in that time, there are lots of issues plaguing their survival and, of course, their development. Yes, the lack of electricity is one oh, of them. Infrastructure generally in Nigeria is just in a bad state. It's a major problem for mm. them. So how do they cope? Mm. This oh. very important sector mm. of our economy. I mean, if they are generating 96%, mm. 96%, mm. It's amazing. It is amazing because uh, practically every individual or businessman is a government on his own. Mm -hmm. You, pr you, uh, you uh, supply your own electricity. You provide uh, your own. Some people even have to even tell their own roads so that they can actually uh, get uh, access to moving from one place to the other. It is really alarming because at the end of the day, if government doesn't really take care of that uh, particular sector, it will actually just die a natural death because a lot of the people will suffer because the bulk of Nigerians are under the SME sector. Yeah, a bulk of them. If mm. it accounts for 84% of mm -hmm. employment, mm -hmm. we already have a very bad uh, record mm -hmm. rate of unemployment. Inflation has gone high. Mm. And so this is a sector that is critical to our development that it must is. not be allowed to suffer it as is. much as it is being suffered. I mean, any, kind of, any government that knows its onions mm. and then wants to grow the economy yes. must ensure that the SMEs... Mm have all that they need, need. to thrive yeah. yes they, yes to they thrive should, yes. like you said that they they are actually um, contribute about over 40 uh, percent to the nation's gross domestic product uh, gdp looking at all the sectors that we have uh in the nation's economy the small business you know 
contribute almost half of it. Mm -hmm. They're taking half the chunk. So you can imagine that uh, the other sectors, aviation, uh, transportation, uh, trade, and all of that, that share the remaining 50-something percent. Mm -hmm. So it is really, really significant, or they are really very significant. A whole lot should be done to actually uh, make that sector really thrive. Uh, you know, government has to put in place a lot of um, um, a, a, a good playing ground for them to operate their, 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 their businesses and, of course, their services. They have um, the Small and Medium uh, Scale and um, Development Association of Nigeria, SMEDEN, and uh, who, uh, which actually uh, fights for their cause over time. But sometimes uh, you find that, that they do all the crying, all the push, and uh, the results they don't get to see because I don't know if government doesn't really take them seriously. The manufacturers, mm. was it not yesterday we saw mm -hmm. the headlines? The news, yes. The excise duty that's gone up, mm -hmm. and they are crying against it, mm -hmm. and rightly so. Mm. I mean, you cannot... Uh, you cannot do that. Well, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be doing that. They should be encouraging them mm -hmm. rather. Even yes. if you want to diversify the economy, you yes. don't diversify the economy by crushing the egg that you have. It it's not you you don't do that. You so don't, don't. It's, it's, it's just so unfortunate that we're seeing that happen. But today we'll be taking a look at the cost of building and running of business mm. in, 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 in Nigeria's our second hot topic. So let's look at the top trending. Uh, we have the first top trending, which is please brutalize Okada rider seize oh. motorcycle in Lagos. We saw that short clip there. Okay. Uh, it's a part of Lagos, somewhere around the Abule area. Okay. Uh, it was a very short clip. We saw uh, the police, uh, two or three police um, men manhandling uh, Nigerian okay. and a cattle rider. Okay. rider okay. And it, it just didn't look good, especially as we are talking about how Shion Kuti mm. uh, disrespected uh, an officer in uniform. Mm. They should also not be seen to be doing the same thing. Yes, because right the now they are in the eyes of um, everyone because of uh, what just happened with Shion Kuti. But over time, you, you, we have to say that the issue of um, police brutality is, has not actually... Uh, gone down, as in the frequency and all of it. Or one would have thought that after all the answers and protests and everything that we've had, that the, there would have been like um, a change, the narrative would be changing by now, but we still hear pockets of um, police harassing the citizens, the Okada riders, and of course even the Kekena Pep, that's and the tricycle operators. Yeah. I will wonder why that is. As mo most of the time, if you look at the, the case seriously, it might be something very petty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw a video, was it not last week or this week, it trended, a, a lady that was being beat mm -hmm. by some uniformed officers. And like, no matter what her crime was, just mm -hmm. take her in legally, mm -hmm. the lawful way. Do yes. it the lawful way. Yes. You know, you don't begin to physically assault mm -hmm. anyone, you especially not a woman. Not, or everyone, anyone, has a right. man everyone. or woman. You don't... Not, not at all. Yeah, that's not the way. She was, she was, she didn't hold any arms. She only had her phone in her hand, mm. and in the course of being whipped, her phone dropped. She bent to pick it. That was all she had with her. So mm. to find them brutalizing her the way they were doing was quite, quite disturbing, mm. you know. So that, that's the first hot topic we have for today. And the second one is the four people that were killed by gunmen in an attack on U.S. embassy officials in Anambra state. Mm. You know, um, they, they went on a humanitarian mission. True. But there they were, they lost their lives in the most gruesome way. Two of them were burnt so, alive. So, they were so, so burnt terrible. to death so beside their vehicles. And I just, I don't understand it. Oh. Well, we heard that there was an ambush on their location uh, where some of the residents in the community gathered to receive uh, medical treatment from UNICEF officials and um, they were attacked. The victims were uh, two police and mobile force operatives and two staff members of uh, the U.S. consulate. Uh, said government in making their escape from responding uh, joint security force. Anyway, it is really something that uh, should be condemned because at this rate where people are actually doing something that is humanitarian and they were attacked mm -hmm. by gunmen, it, uh, it says a lot about the security situation in um, the southeastern part of the country. You know, over time we've heard of the issues of um, IPOB at the ESN and, uh, you know, stay at home and all of that. And uh, one wonders uh, how we can actually stem this issue of uh, Southeast insecurity you know, in the bud. The Southeast governors need to come together. I thought they had once. They had, uh, they came together. There was uh, uh, a network they called uh, Ibubagu. 
you know, one would have thought that they would have been able to streamline the operations and by now I was, should have been seeing some sort of changes. But then that has not really changed. The people, the residents are still afraid to come out on some particular days of the week and all of that. I understand there was a meeting, was it not this week or last week, where mm. they had some disagreement also over state police. Okay. The Igbo governors, the Igbo elders, mm. they need to do more. Mm -hmm. They are not doing enough, in my opinion. They are not. Okay. Because what is going on in the East is, is just so de deplorable. Is it the level of de development in that place? It's nothing to write home about. True. The East can do so much. Mm. Is it Abia State? Is it Onicha? Mm. The East is very, very endowed. Okay. And if the governors will look inwards and stop being so self-centered mm. and stop wanting to be all eyes on me, they can just come together and develop that place. Yes. Aside from the regional security, like you have said, there's a whole lot uh, you know, going on in the southeast. Uh, in um, Abia State, we have um, the, a very commercial nerve center there. That's Abad, the area, area market. We have the Onicha main market. And these ones are even international. Mm -hmm. People from all over Africa come to those markets to actually trade. So there's a huge potential there. And uh, if there's so much coming out from the in terms of um, trade and all that, issues of um, security, issues of um, road and everything should be addressed um, holistically by the governors because at the end of the day, the development is actually coming to their own towns. Yeah, during the primaries, mm. the PDP primaries, you saw what happened. Mm. In the Ibos, they didn't come together to feel the strong force. Mm. Everybody wanted to run. And, run. and at the end of the day, what we saw was Dollar Gate. Mm. And <laughs> yes, Atiku emerged. Mm. And yeah, he, he, he played his games well. Mm. Politics is about calculations. You True. don't expect them to drop it on your laps. Mm -hmm. And so the Igbos must come together, mm. really come together, and have a common political strength not each man for himself mm. i want to wear the cap i am most this mm. i am it most should be me it should no be me. you one. have be and they have a lot of issues mm. in this country you know they, they need to come together and really sort themselves out they need to, to avoid all of this all because of this it's really becoming country. very embarrassing to it say the least and i think i should even stress more on what you said about um the leaders and, of course, community leaders specifically, because I, you wouldn't tell me that uh, you don't even know what your your son or your nephew or, uh, you know, the companies and they keep. Over time, you know if they're actually uh, with those um, hoodlums over time, because uh, from uh, association and all of that, you'll be able to find out uh, uh, how, if they are going back. So if uh, our community leaders uh, maybe call for some meetings uh, with um, the, uh, the people that they are leading, you know, I'm sure in a long way, it will go a long way in actually addressing these issues of um, use, uh, uh, use restiveness and the insecurity to be brought to a board. And even the families also have a huge role to play in that regard. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, this incident that happened in Anambra, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, these people had actually come to give aid to the people True. in the land, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, staff of another country, mm -hmm. the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, you then begin to wonder what exactly do they intend to gain from such an attack? I wonder when they actually bring in some sort of relief and... Um you know, succor and aids to your communities. You should even um, give them all the security, all the protection, and even encourage them so they can even come some other time, say, just in case um, the need um, arises. Yes, and if you're agitating for something, for mm. instance, if they are agitating or seeking for any kind of, um, they have an agitation, no doubt. We, we see that they have an so agitation. To the right we places. hear that they exactly channel mm. is in the right place. Don't kill your people. At all, you don't. And don't you, you, you would need international sympathy too. So sure. when you begin to kill people belonging to well, another country, exactly. So mm -hmm. you, we really want to see an end to all of this. Ndibo sure. should, Ndibo can do, do better and they can, they can, they they can. be better. They really can. We're still watching The Breakfast on the, uh, the, the on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a short break, give you the weather report, and we'll be back in a minute. Stay with us.